Hi guys, thank you for being here today. Let's see what we can do with these colours and this background colour. As you have probably already found out, grey is a common colour that starts to form at the end of different pores. If you put your colours together at the end of a pore and you save the drippings, often you have some sort of grey. Now this is formed out of some blues, a tiny bit of gold, a tiny bit of black and some white. It will dry darker than this as you've seen in the picture at the beginning. Um, but it's also a bit darker than what it shows on the screen. I think the lighting has that sort of effect. Okay, so we've got iridescent gold from Pepio. Patches of metallic copper. And some lovely titanium white by Dale Rowney. I'll be coming in every now and then with a the white and putting it in sporadically. I don't want it to feature, but I do want it to highlight. Now that's an iridescent blue-green. And on top of that, I've got iridescent green-blue. I think that's my favorite color at the moment. And this color combination with different bases is something I'm really experimenting with at the moment. So a bit more white there just to highlight and to separate the layers. Keeping my colours simple today, I'm now just surrounding the colours that I've put down with the base paint. So the flow of the paint is smoother. So what I'm doing now is I'm blowing in on both sides, traditional Dutch pour. Um, the reason why we do this is so we can get the paint reacting and prepare it for the blowout. Okay, so I'm going to start blowing out now. And already I can see some gorgeous cells and I'm happy with the flow, so that's really, really good. I think you can tell when you're putting the paints down how it's going to begin to blow out. Now that white patch down there is a bit too much, so I'm going to end up putting some more blue and gold through it. And that's the thing, when you start blowing out your paintings, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't go how you want it to in part of the painting. It's often the fact that you like most of the painting and some of it you want to adjust. But that's all part of fluid art going with the process. So this is the iridescent blue-green with a bit of gold down there. I'm just layering it in such a way that it's going all the way through the white. So this would be quite strong. I'm going to put a bit more white on top. I don't want to lose that white which is disappearing very slightly into the background. Okay, so once again surround the paint you want to blow out with the base paint. It's something I always used to forget when I first started painting with fluid art. Blow it over both sides and then blow it out. I'm much happier with that. Okay. This makeshift spinner, I'm going to have to do a video on it, it's so convenient. This painting is 20 inches by 28 inches, so it's quite a big canvas and it's quite important to have it completely supported and level. So the spinner and how you make it is, um, yeah. I think there are quite a few of them out there. I I tend to adjust mine according to the size. But if you would like to, I will do a video on that later. Okay. So the paint's developing now. 
Now I'm just going to leave you for a while while I begin to use a swipe technique to add some colds and add some greens. The gold again is iridescent by Pepio and the blues are green blue and blue green by Pepio. Enjoy and I shall see you shortly. So just adding some finished touches now with pearl white. I'm loving that pearl white. And that is by Dana Rowney. So I think we've come to the end now and I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I've got a short clip here to bring you up and show you the painting now. And this is the wet version. And then this is a dried picture. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope to see you again soon. This is yet to be varnished. So it's still glowing quite nicely. See you soon guys. Bye.